where that wasn't the case. So there's lots to be optimistic about. Uh, joining us now, 11-year NBA vet, two-time All-Star, world champion with the Spurs in 99, an outstanding analyst for the Spurs. And he's the guy the Kings should have taken. I said it then. I'll say it now. <laughs> when they had the first pick in the 1989 yeah. draft, Sean Elliott. How are you, Sean? I'm um, doing all right. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. But, hey, it, it ended up all well. I mean, it ended up being really good. Yeah, it worked so out for you, right? Complain. Yeah, it worked out for the best. It worked out better for you than it did for us, Sean. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, I got to play with David and got to play with Timmy, and now I get to call Victor's game. So, you know, how lucky can one man get? Um, Do you have a favorite Wemby moment from this year where he did something on the floor that even you, you know, basketball's been your whole life, something that you maybe Mm -hmm. took a moment to process or something where you thought, I haven't seen anybody do that before? That's pretty much every game. But that's pretty much every night he does something that you just have never seen before, and that's absolutely remarkable. I would say if I had to pick one moment, it was uh, against Charlotte at home this year where he came out at the beginning of the third quarter and just absolutely took the game over, just ended the game really in the first three or four minutes of that third quarter with about three or four dunks in a row, some big blocks, just completely took over the game. And it was that was – it was insane. It was absolute uh, madness. It was so much fun to watch. Sean Elliott joining us, Spurs legend, Spurs broadcaster. Sean, we were talking about Victor and just his development. And, and one of the things I mentioned is we're the veterans that sort of are, are taking him under his wing there in San Antonio. I'm looking at the roster. Yeah. They, they don't seem to, you guys don't seem to have yeah. any. What about his development? <laughs> Who's most been most responsible for that, you think? Uh, it's been pop, to be honest with you, because we don't have a lot of veterans. We don't really have any veterans yeah. at his position to kind of teach him the ropes, you know. So it, it was, it's been a concern, and uh, Pop talked about it a month or so back, how, uh, you know, when Timmy came in the league, he had a lot of veterans that were already established and that he could rely upon. Same thing with Big Dave. Dave came in, and he was also a little bit older. But we had Terry Cummings on the team. We had Mo Cheeks. We got Paul Pressey. You know, we had established veterans, guys that had been around to kind of show David the ropes. So it, his victor situation is entirely different than those two guys. He's got a lot of young guys that are still trying to find their way, and he doesn't have those veterans to consistently rely upon to tell him, you know, uh, just simple matchups. Like uh, when I was a rookie, uh, I remember there was a, the second game of the year we were playing the Houston Rockets. I didn't know who Buck Johnson was. Half the guys in the locker came up to me and started giving me a scout report on Buck, and that helped me, you know, throughout the course of the game. Victor doesn't have anybody like that where he can rely on right now. So uh, it's been a little bit of a little bit more of an adjustment period for him, just because he doesn't have a lot of established season vets. Sean Elliott, nice enough to join us, Spurs analyst, as we get ready for the Spurs and the Kings tonight. How has he dealt, Sean, not only with the challenges of his first year in the NBA, but his his first year stateside? Uh, It's been pretty remarkable. I mean, you're you're exactly right. I mean, how many uh, rookies are coming over at 19 years old, by the way? He just turned 20 in early January. He's come over at 19 years old to an entirely different country. Uh, He speaks English extremely well, uh, and he's just got a great attitude. So, you know, he's the kind of kid that when you talk to him, he's fearless. He lives in the moment. So I don't think he's really intimidated by coming to a different country, uh, playing it at the highest level in the world. He, it, to him, it's more like a challenge. It's something that he's embracing, and he just uh, he, he's really enjoying the ride. And uh, I, I really believe it'd be harder, much harder for any of our guys if you sent them overseas into the same type of situation and where they didn't know the language very well, they weren't familiar with their teammates, and the adjustment period. So he's, he's, it's been remarkable for him. Hmm. Sean, Sean I, I, I'm going to keep it real with you, man. You know, I, I'm yeah. excited to see you guys tonight. You know, what was Pop thinking at the beginning of the season with the point guard spot? And it seemed like the guys didn't know how to play with Wimby, didn't know how to get him the ball. Like, have you seen yeah. uh, an improvement in that with Trey Jones now starting? Yeah, yeah. Well, well. First off, first thing when you talk about the point guard position, Pop was trying to establish a bigger lineup. He wanted to have Jeremy Sohan at that point guard position because Jeremy can guard one through five essentially out there on the floor. 
So you wanted to have a good rebounding team, a good defensive presence, but that just didn't work out because it's hard to make somebody into a point guard when they're not. He, Jeremy's a good playmaker, but playing that point guard position is entirely different. When you move Victor to center and you bring Trey Jones now from off the bench to starting, we've been playing much, much better basketball. Uh, Trey's our guy who really has a point guard's mentality, really sees the floor so much better than our other guys out there. And we've gotten more lobs, more wide open shots for Victor since Trey has been on the floor. And the third part is, well, I want to say a month and a half, two months ago, after one of the Spurs games, I got to meet all three of Victor's coaches from France at various times of his career, the, the three different coaches had him at one point or another. They were his three professional coaches. And they each told me that every team that Victor was on, the players had trouble adjusting to him because he's not an ordinary talent. It's hard to wrap your mind around throwing some of these lobs and some of the plays that he makes because you just don't see anything like that. And so for us, it was an adjustment. You know, guys, we were, it was driving us crazy as announcers when you try to throw him a bounce pass on the low block and the guy behind him was able to, to knock it away. Just throw it high where no one can get to it. And another part of that, too, by the way, is the league is different. When I came in the league, when I caught the ball on the wing, the first thing I looked for was David Robinson, the low block. It was an inside-out game. When Timmy Duncan was on our team, we're coming down the floor. We run our offense through them. The first thing you do when you catch the ball is you're looking down there for those big guys. Now, the first thing our guys do and everybody looks for is a three ball. It's a complete reversal of the way, uh, you know, our, the way we were taught to play the game and the way, you know, being inside out, the way the game is supposed to be played. So you have a lot of times where he's down there in the low block, guys miss him because we're looking to shoot three balls. We're not programmed like we were back in the day to dump the ball down the low block and play off your bigs. That's really interesting, Sean Elliott with us. It's kind of like you, Drace, when you came on the show and we all had to adjust to you because we'd never <laughs> no, – That's because of my ego, of course, Sean. I, I, I got a big ego. That's, that's what well, they Well, I don't want to say that, to. but yeah, exactly. Uh, Mike Brown spent some time in San Antonio, of course. What, what has impressed you yeah. the most, Sean, about the job that Coach Brown has done since he's joined uh, Sacramento? Uh, he's gotten a, a group of guys together to play hard on both ends of the floor and, and to play for each other. Uh, you know, if you've been around Mike enough, you know already he's a great guy. I mean, there's there's no disputing that. And he's got a great basketball mind. He was instrumental in helping pop out through, uh, I mean, numerous playoff series. And so Mike knows exactly what he's doing. Our organization has a great deal of respect for him. But right now he's taking a – I mean, I heard you guys talking before we started the interview about how the buzz was last year in this in this city with this team now winning and making it to the playoffs. You know, he's been a huge part of that. He's got he's gotten the most out of his two big stars. Uh, he's gotten the most out of guys coming off the bench and his role players, and he's done a fabulous job just integrating them all, blending them all together, and getting them to work well together. And that's so hard, it's hard to do. I mean, everybody in the mm -hmm. NBA has talent. Every team has talent. But when you get guys to park their egos and play for the guy to the right or left of you across the board, that's the greatest challenge the coach has. So Mike's done a, a phenomenal job just uh, building chemistry here and turning this team into a winner. Sean, when we uh, watch uh, the Spurs tonight, uh, give me some things you're looking for that if, if the Spurs do well, that means they're playing good basketball and that means they can win the game. What should fans be looking for tonight? Uh, well, uh, they played well the last two games of the road, road trip. Victor had a, that triple-double blocks in Toronto, which was very impressive. So the thing I noticed about that game, the, the previous three or four games before that looked to me that he'd hit the rookie wall. He was tired. Mm -hmm. He was asking to come out earlier than normal, about the 7.45 mark. Normally comes out about 6.30 or 6 minutes on the clock in the first quarter. Uh, he was coming. He was asking to come out early. He didn't have a lot of juice. Didn't lot of have have a lot of energy. Kind of regained that the last two games of the of our road trip. And if he's active on the defensive end of the floor, he's not standing around. He's going for blocks. He's in two or three places at once. When he has that activity level, we are so much better on the defensive end of the floor. And on the offensive end, 
We've got to play through him. He's only playing about 30 minutes a game. So when he's out there, you've got to maximize his time to the fullest because the other 18 minutes, we're, we're not nearly the team uh, that we are when he's on the floor. And so those 30 minutes that he's on the floor, he's got to have the ball a lot in his hands. He's a great passer. Uh, he can shoot the three ball with a lot of range. He can put the ball on the floor. Uh, he's really a dynamic player, a lot of fun to watch. So if we play through him, we take care of the basketball, we don't allow you guys to get it going in the break and run us off the court, then, you know, maybe we have a chance to make some shots down the stretch and maybe win a game. Sean, I want to thank you for your time, and I also want to say I really appreciate uh, how well you handled yourself when Drapes clearly was trying to agitate you when you first came on, Drapes was saying, we're going to beat the Spurs tonight. And then he was like, what is Pop doing? Hey, and you were very calm. Hey, I, I, I tell you what, I, I, I was a UCLA fan growing up, Sean. So you, yeah. you were already oh, on my man. list, man. I was a UCLA fan back in the day. Well, I was happy to disappoint you then, my brother. <laughs> Those were the days, yeah. man. Appreciate it, Sean. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. You're we welcome. appreciate it very much. Talk to you soon. Yeah, right. we'll see you that's good tonight. stuff. Yeah. Yes, I did want him to be the first pick in '89. Yeah, they with Purvis Ellison. Oh man, Purvis was just not in. This is just just not the one, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and Sean went third that year too. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't, didn't even go, go second. He didn't even go he second. He 